Welcome back to the Composing Made Simple podcast. On today's episode, we're going to talk about mental health, Spitfire Kepler Orchestra, and a little controversy with the Spitfire Studio Series. And then we'll go into our picks of the week. So I hope you guys join us for this episode, and let's get on into it. Composing Made Simple. We talk about something new every show. Composing Made Simple. Grab coffee, have a seat, and let's go. All right, on today's episode, we wanted to start off the podcast with a, a very important subject that we think it doesn't get discussed a lot, and I really wanted to touch upon it because I've dealt with some of this stuff, and I'm pretty sure Chris and Curtis has as well, is mental health and being a composer and how you deal with it. Um, I think for me, uh, recently, you know, just in my personal life and losing my job in 2017 and doing freelancing, uh, my mental health has has a lot of had a lot of ups and downs. You know, I have a lot of responsibilities. I have two children, a house, you know, just like Curtis. And you know, when you're the bearer of trying to put food on the table and pay your bills, um, you know, obviously, if if you're a musician or a composer and that's what you do for your full time gig, and when you're not getting work, you know, that mental health and depression really creeps up and. Um, I can't speak, you know, I don't make my, my full-time living off music, but I did freelance for a whole year, which is very similar, you know, waiting on your job and waiting for people to get back to you. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, a graphic designer, instructional designer, a musician or whatever, freelancing is freelancing. So we thought we wanted to talk about this, give some of our opinions and some of the things that we struggle with and maybe give us some tips and tricks of how to deal with it. So yeah, um, I guess I'll go into just kind of first, like how I deal with it. Well, um, I'm one of those people who are very, very hard on myself. You know, I'm, I'm just one of those people. That's just how I am. And, you know, if I write music or something I don't like, I'll get depressed, you know, if I don't like something. And uh, it just gets me in like a glum mood. And I'll just kind of mope around for a few days. And especially if I haven't played guitar or if I haven't wrote music for a while, I'll, I'll start getting this like depression. It's not like real depression, but just like this bum feeling. Like I need to do something or something's missing in my life. And... That happened a lot last year when I was working freelances. I really didn't have a lot of time to devote to music because I was, I mean, I was literally working 12 to 14 hours a day. I was working on Sundays sometimes because I was just so busy. But, uh, you know, I think what we all have to realize is, um, is, you know, we need to deal with mental health. And if it's really bothering you, talk to somebody, find a friend, your significant other, or a therapist or whoever to talk to because it's serious. It will really, you know, depression can creep creep up on you pretty quickly. I, I know I've dealt with it in the past. What about you guys? Um, I mean, sure. As soon as you work on something and that you're proud of, if uh, and, you know, and then that's over, and sometimes it feels like that's never going to happen again. Oh, that was my one thing. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, you just again, my uh, my I say this every. Right. I feel like every podcast, but uh, just insert, you know, maybe clip out a clip of me saying uh, compose every day from one before. And I just find that uh, just trying uh, is the only thing I have found that that reliably works, that reliably um, makes me feel better because, um, you know, at yep. first, sometimes it doesn't, right? You sit down and try to make something, you're frustrated, you don't think it's a good um that's really bad. And then, but you just do it again and again and again. And then somewhere in there, you sort of like realize, wait a second, I really like this all of a sudden. At least that's how it always is for me. Um, and it's not always like right after either. <laughs> it's not, you know, the first try. It's sometimes the 27th try mm-hmm. after. Um, and that's, you know, you just exactly. got to keep going. Um, and that's really hard to do because it requires you to sit down and do this thing. I mean, I once saw an interview with a, I can't remember, it was a sci-fi author of somebody, and he was he was complaining that he's tired of people writing him, fans writing him and telling him how hard it is to write. He's like, of course it's hard to write. Like, if it weren't hard to write, why wouldn't everybody be be an author? You know, like if it was easy to, to write, everyone would do it. Um, and, and, you know, I don't... Exactly. That's a really, that's a skill too, by the way. Like that, that takes... You have to do it a lot to get good at continuing to do it, to sort of uh, uh, cultivate that stubbornness, I guess, and grow it so that you're just, just okay, well, this project sucks, close it, start a new one. <laughs> uh, it's hard, and that's that's really hard. And especially when you don't have as much time, if, you know, maybe you have a day job and, you know, you just feel like you waste your time. You didn't waste, like, no time spent trying is wasted, Uh and you would be shocked when you go back and listen to some of that stuff later. You're like, oh, this wasn't terrible. 
what was I thinking? This wasn't exactly. bad. You know, sometimes it's just, it's just a thing. And that's, that's the only thing I found that reliably works, um, is to just sit down and continue. So, yeah, I mean, I can definitely relate to that as, um, I, I'm in the position where I'm not quite like Todd and Curtis yet, where, you know, I have to manage a house and, and, you know, all the bills and things like that. So I, I do have more time to work on music personally. Um, and the, the main issue I deal with the most is kind of like frustration when I'm trying to get something across, but I, I just can't pull on those mental ideas to and, and translate it into the DAW. So for me, what always works is kind of like what Curtis said, but I, I have to take a few breaks here and there. Like I have to freshen up my mind or I feel like I start to go crazy. So I have to step away from the computer for at least 10 minutes, um, you know, to do something else, have some food or whatever. And then... Yeah. Or even, you know, 20, 30 minutes, come back with the, some more object, objectivity and then kind of say like, okay, did I enjoy what I just did here in the past like 20 minutes? And, uh, you know, does it sound good? If so, let's continue. If not, then um, maybe I should try a different approach. <laughs> approach. But uh, yeah, in general, it's, I, I think taking breaks is, is super important. And it's, yeah, it's like something that we don't do enough because we have to feel like we're working every single minute. But um yeah, for, for how it works, yeah. Exactly. Dude, you just hit it on the nail on the head there. It's okay to take breaks. Even if you have to take a week or two off from writing music, go outside, live life, get life experience so you have something to write from. You know, you guys hit on some great stuff. And, um, yeah, I I think as composers, we feel like we always have to sit in this chair and compose music 12, you know, 12, 14 hours a day, every day. Like, you mm-hmm. got to have life experience, you know, because that's going to enforce or, you know, that's going to come out in your writing. Like, you know, especially if you have a lot of bad things happening in your life, I think your music's going to reflect that. And it's good to get out there, go on vacations, go spend time with your family, go out and hang out with friends. You don't have to sit in this chair 12, 14 hours a day. I, th- I think is after a while you get diminishing returns. You know what I mean? Like you, like you said, Chris and Curtis, you know, there's just some days that the lightning is just not there, but you still have to well, sit and in those, there and try to well, do and those, those days are really, yeah, those days a really good thing to do is to, you know, modern sample libraries have a lot of patches and be honest with yourself. How many do you actually know what they sound like? You know, if you don't want to write, just, you know, if you don't want to write, just sit down with the patches. What does this one do? 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 And that you'll find sometimes that, oh, you find one, I love it. And all of a sudden you're off to the race. Yeah, um, I mean, like you could do I mean, that. Like, I mean, you could I, do that. I, I, I mean, I, I, I have probably actually auditioned two percent of the content, that I, have for of the content that I have like, for Omnisphere. Like, there's just like, this vast, there's just this vast thing of, things I've never of things I've never and even so heard. And so sometimes, and so it's, like, sometimes well, writing, it's like, well, I'm going to stop writing, and I'm just going to go figure out what all these sound like, and just go from one to the next to the next to the next. And oftentimes that just and oftentimes that just completely fixes the problem because fixes the problem because I find something that I love and I'm excited about that sound. And then forward and you, I can and move this forward and you, and this, this is, is true of everything. This is true of the orchestral stuff too. I mean, go through every single violin like, articulation. You'd be shocked like, at how many of them are You'd be shocked at how many of them are shockingly useful. useful. Or maybe they're, maybe they're not useful. And then you can mark them in your brain. Not useful in your brain. And move on. But, um, just you know, like learning piano, just is, like hard, learning learning piano is hard, learning each of your libraries, of your libraries is hard, and so that's a good time to, to maybe do that. And of course, that's not wasted time, right? Like, and you, can, time, right? You, like, and you can if you should feel good if all you do is sit down for two hours and you just audition like, patches. Really like good that's really well spent. good time well spent. And then you too can go on to VI control and be like, oh well, you just have to listen to that. You know, you you know, you you know, you can you could be that guy if you want. You know, so I mean, it's 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 or girl. it's um it's a thing. It's, it's, a, it's a thing. A, it's, it's a great, it's a great a, try. It's, it's a great thing to do. Try. It's, like it's a great thing to do. You could feel like you're without doing having music to have the pressure without of, having to I have the pressure of, of I wrote ten bars today. Right. Or two bars. Yeah. Yeah. Or two bars. Or two. Right. I mean, yeah. Like think I think we gotta start thinking of sample libraries yeah. as an instrument. You know, just like playing the piano, just like playing the guitar, bass, whatever. It's an instrument. You gotta master them, you gotta learn them, you gotta learn what they can and can't do how to sculpt them and dude that's a great point because like i'm the same way man i'm just as guilty i own atmosphere i have a couple unfinished packs by the way go pick those up as they're made i have them all um, and there's just <laughs> yeah there's just so much content and you'd be surprised like just you you will find gems in there you never even know mm-hmm. existed and i used to be that guy that would never use loops i'm like that's ah, cheating it's cheat dude Everybody does it. Get over it. Get over it. Because I've had so many things spark ideas, just like you said, Curtis, like a loop, like a drum loop or just like a just a loop, man. I actually put a loop in one of my uh, songs I was doing 
it was this uh, like uh, Middle Eastern instrument, and I did some effects to it, you know, sure. to make it my own. And it was really cool as an intro thing. And I was like, man, that I would have never thought of doing that if I did. And it was a a, a loop through Logic. You know, Logic yeah. has all those loops. Um, it was one of those. And man, there's some awesome stuff. In Logic there. built in dulcimer is one of my That's favorite dulcimers. It's yes. my favorite. One of my favorite dulcimers. Man, they got. I think people crap on Logic a lot, and I've been using it a lot lately, and it's a very powerful DAW, and um, there's so many instruments in there, and loops, and synths, and just great stuff. Man, the drummer, the built-in drummer, I've been using it on tracks, and I actually shared one of my songs to somebody in the Discord, and he's like, what drum is that? Is that the <laughs> East West Pro something? I was like, dude, that's out of Logic, man. <laughs> I was like, that's just straight out of Logic. There's like nothing to it, and he was impressed with it, so yeah, I think... Logic is more powerful than people give it, but um, it's just a workflow thing. I think what most people don't like it, but yeah, you, great points, Curtis. No, sorry, no, I, I think no, I could cut you off, Chris. That's I said all I had to say there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, mental health—it's a big thing, and a lot of people don't talk about it. And like, wasn't there a composer recently? I don't know if he committed suicide. That one famous guy that was, uh, or just becoming famous. I can't think of his name. Uh, this wasn't he like. Um, from Iceland or, Iceland or whatever. Um, oh, I can't right, think of his right. name. It was like last year. I don't know if it was suicide or whatever, right, but right. like they never really said what it was. Um, but I saw talks of it. Um, and it's a real thing. So I guess we can go into our next topic that we had for mental health is rejection and failure. Um, this is a tough one. And I think this is tough for everybody, but I think what we have to get over and have to learn is you're going to have more rejections and failures than you are going to have successes. Um, that's just the name of the game. You're going to get rejected. You're going to fail, but you, the thing that you need to think about and, and do with the failures is learn from them. Don't make the same mistake twice and treat it as that, you know, change your mindset. I've been doing a lot of um, self, not self-improvement self books, you know, just kind of thinking of that because, like I said, my mental health has been, it's, it's been on a roller coaster the, the last year. Um, it's been very tough and there's been days that, you know, th th mm. I've had some bad thoughts. Let's just, let's just keep it as that, you know. Can I continue? Is What am I doing? You know, like, but, you know, one good advice is just think that this is not forever. This is just a one little moment in time. It's going to be bad. And then, you know, it will get, you'll get, you'll get by it. You know, like we always do in life. But, you know, like I said, just reach out to people. Hey, come right. over, talk to us, <laughs> come to the discord. I'll, I'll get on Skype and talk with you. Um, or, you know, we'll, we can talk through the discord mm -hmm. voice chat if you need help. Um, I'm here. Um, I'm, I'm willing to talk to anybody because I know what it's like, man. And it's tough. But um, yeah, so rejection and failure, it's in my, I mean, I'm 30, almost 38 years old. And I can, I think rejection and failures are the ones that always stick out for everybody. It's just how your mindset deals with it. And that's what it is. Like, I'm, a, I'm just a negative, kind of a negative thought person. It just kind of a way it was kind of the way I was brought up and you know um which I'm trying to fix mm -hmm. you know I'm trying to be more positive but I I guess I can say I'm more pessimistic I think um right. you know more cynical yeah, <laughs> and the older yeah. I get the more I get you know um I think it's just the nature of stuff but it's just a mindset thing and I think one good advice I could give people is surround yourself with positive people that's mm. that's that's the best thing I can say um your reflection of who you hang with and who you get yourself around. So if you want to be successful, surround yourself with people that are successful and that are better than you because that's going to drive you because you don't want to look like an idiot. You know, you don't want to be like, oh man, I want to be just as good as them or even better. And I think that will help you out. And that's just kind of my experience. And um, I'm antisocial kind of person by nature, um, you know, and I work from home and all that. So I don't get out a lot. And I think that has a lot to do with my mental health as well. Um, and plus, we just got over winter, and I know Curtis, you just got dumped with what? I know weeks. it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's like the end of May. It's insane. <laughs> we had to have our my in laws stay with us because they literally couldn't drive home because it was so much snow on the roads. It was oh, insane. Man. Like it's almost June, people. What is happening? Anyway, I know and that messes. Yes, with your it, mental does. Health, man. yes know, it does. Yes, it does. I am ready for yes. summer. I'm ready for it's not heat. Good. Yeah, man. But yeah, I just I think my little takeaway from rejection and failure is get used to it. <laughs> I know that sounds is harsh, but that's the truth. But take think of it as a positive. Like I said, let's take that negative and let's turn it to a positive and learn from that. 
and you say, okay, well, that's why I did, you know, and study why you, re- you think you got rejected. You, they're just, you're just going to get rejected for projects. It's just, that's just life, you know? We're not always going to get everything we get. I know sometimes some people are just lucky. Everything they do, they get, you know? That's just, that's just life. There's just some people like that. But, you know, it, that doesn't mean you're a failure or you're less than. Um, it's just, mm-hmm. that's just how, how the world turns, <laughs> you know? So, um yeah. No, I mean, like, I think, yeah. yeah. Sorry, on, on that, yeah. Um, I, I think from personal experience, I find that when I don't get an opportunity uh, that I wanted, um, I, I do try to find out who it was that did got selected and what they might have done differently mm-hmm. or how their application was different, you know. And, of course, that that's probably the best learning experience we can have and try to apply some of those things to our own work, right? So if it's like for a composing gig or some yeah. an arrangement thing or whatever, um, you know, if, if that person has a successful um, project done in that position, then you can see like what are those things that they're doing that maybe we didn't do or that I haven't put out yet. So then I, I think of that as like extra motivation to keep on refining my craft and see how I can improve in those aspects and possibly maybe have another chance of, getting that in the future right so um it's it's all a learning experience for sure there's nothing it's probably like not that much more complex than that it's just something someone had that you might not have had or didn't present properly and so then you just keep making it and keep trucking along and keep improving yourself and that's it so that i mean that's basically what i live by i mean yeah and 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 just understand that that um revising something in response to negative feedback is uh, it's a skill again i just go back to this idea of it is a skill that must be learned and to be good at it you need to actually do it a lot Mm -hmm. Um, there's just no substitute for that like if you want to work in the high-end music business in film or or um, games or anything uh, you are going to be spending a significant amount of time revising stuff based on feedback you know, especially if you if you want if you want to be the guy who's working on these huge games or, or or films, I mean, the amount of people that get input on your music is staggering. It's enormous, and you're just going to get notes just buried in notes. And right. so, learning to 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 do that is and and that like for me that is a struggle. That is really hard. When I finish finish like a piece of music that has a beginning, middle, and an end, I do not like to revisit it. I do not like there is a just a natural part of me that wants to not go back to that but sometimes you you turn it in and they say this is really not the direction we're going for can it be more like this and you just have to do it if you want to get you know not just this job but the next one with these people yes. and and you just have to do it and and it's and that's hard and so you know not all the time is a rejection i guess is what i'm trying to say here a rejection necessarily like maybe it's just it's a it's a what Todd was saying it's like an opportunity to to work on that skill to learn how to revise and to and to learn how to go back um, and you know that's really hard to do because sometimes you know you'll you'll turn something in everybody will be like uh, yeah it was fine but we really want to go in this different direction you'll go you'll do a bunch of revisions you'll bring it back they'll say ah do this and you'll bring it back and you go through this process over and over and over again and then they're like hey but what about that thing from that original idea you had. And you have to learn how to like meld that back into this Franken piece that you've now put together based on <laughs> a million notes. And, 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 you know, I guess I would just say that, that all, all of which is to say that rejection is sometimes, um, just simply a note, right? It's just, right. we don't like this particular thing. We don't not like you. We just want a different direction from you. Right. Here. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's, and that's hard. And that's really, 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 really hard, especially when you love something, right? But, you know, get get used yeah. to this idea. Kill your darlings. Like, get really used to getting rid of yeah. all the music. The best piece of music I have ever written for a game is will never be heard by anyone. Never. Mm. Never. <laughs> because it's my favorite thing I've ever written, and it will never be heard. So mm. that's that's just – that's if you want to do commercial music, that's just where you're going to be. If you don't want to do that, yeah. you need to go to oh, concert realm and you get to be the master of your own whatever <laughs> yeah i got got two points uh, great stuff curtis um first is you got to understand if you're like curtis said if you're going for film music or hollywood you're competing with the best of the best mm-hmm. you know 
So on a given day, if there's 10 people in the room, they're the 10 best people in, you know, in that room and you're competing with them. So that's a very hard thing, you know? Um, so there, and it's going to come down to a personality. Sometimes it's just mm. personality, you know, who do they like better? Not necessarily do they like yeah. music better. It's who do they like and who do they want to work with? Um, that's one thing, you know? And the second thing is, is a quote from Bruce Lee, be like water. Um, you know, it, that, that, that one rings so true. Be like water. You got to flow. You got to adjust as you go and you can't get stuck in your perception. You know what I mean? Like your way. Well, I don't want, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you yeah. just Absolutely. have to flow. Absolutely. And that quote that Bruce Lee had, and a lot, there's a lot of Bruce Lee quotes that I love. Um, I actually got one of his books um, like a year or two ago, um, one of his philosophy books. And I read it and I was just like, ah, man, this guy was just brilliant. Um, you know, and I've liked Bruce Lee since I was in like fifth grade. Um, and uh, I saw The Dragon when they came out with The Dragon. I don't know if you guys remember that. That movie came out in the 90s about him. And that's what got me into him. And I remember seeing that when I was in like fifth grade. And then I went and, and I remember saying, seeing the A&E biography on him. Wow. God damn, that just dates how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I was in fifth grade. And like his, the stuff that he was talking about was just, and now that I'm older, I yeah. get it. You know, like, because that be like water sure. is a very famous It's funny. No, it's like, um, and I didn't understand speaking about it, that, like that quote and all that. I, I literally had a project this week and um, it was for a client who first uploaded a video of him playing a really nice piano piece kind of in a easy listening jazz style. <clears throat> and so I reached out to him and I'm like, would you like uh, an orchestral arrangement of this piece? And he's like, sure. So I spent the next couple of weeks trying to brainstorm how to approach it. And the way I had kind of did it is that I started to watch the nice like orchestral lush thing. Um, and then in the middle, I kind of had this swing band take over. And then at the end, the full orchestra came back. So, you know, I, I probably spent, you know, five, six, okay, at least 10 hours working on that um, middle section because it's not something I've ever done before. And uh, I showed it to him and he was like, I really like the um, the first and the last sections, but the middle part is just not working for me. It's that I, uh, I, I don't envision, you know, a swing band at all. And... Uh, I was like, oh, okay. So I guess you could see that as kind of like a minor uh -oh. form of rejection. But it's 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 like feedback, right? It's all based on the client's needs and all that. And so I um, I turned that middle section back into the orchestral type of thing. And it turned out um, very well for him after that. And he, he liked it. And so, but in the Hello. process, I, I learned how to work in a style that I wasn't, you know, very experienced with. So like I was saying before, every experience is like, you know, a, a new learning possibility and, um, this is basically just the most recent illustration of that in my case. So, yeah. 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 I mean, that's, that's always so hard when you're, especially when there's time, that yes. went into it, right? Like a lot of time. Sure. Um, and, and yeah, that's, that's, that's always really hard. I mean, from a revision point, I mean, you just cut out the middle, right? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, exactly. But, 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 <laughs> but yeah, but it hurts that like selecting all those regions and hitting delete is just like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, you know, and, and, you know, I've, 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 you know, if you go on to the, the, I can't remember what it's called. There's a Reddit forum for like, I need, uh, I, you know, I want to, I want to work on a game. It's like game dev classifieds. And you look at, not don't even worry i mean not even thinking about what todd was talking about which he was right about that you're competing against the best like just look how many people you're competing against like exactly. go, go look at a game dev thing where someone's like i'm looking for a musician you will see 50 replies in an hour yep. um from people <laughs> and and because <laughs> it's yeah it's yeah so it's funny. it's oh, insane how many people yeah. so i mean yeah it's it's uh it's it's real hard so um you, know, you just gotta you just gotta you got to be like Teflon, man. You got to be like Teflon water, like Todd was talking about. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, Chris, any more on that? And uh... um, yeah, no, I, I just, um, like, I think it just in general, yeah, having having to face rejection in general is is a reality for all of us for sure, and we we all have our own ways to deal with it. But honestly, I think uh, rejection is even sometimes more valuable than uh, than being complimented or being accepted for everything that we do or else we have really no motivation to improve so um absolutely it's it's something that we should take every opportunity to uh to learn from and 
Uh, for me personally, I've had, yeah, like, like I mentioned, a few of these where like, even within a project, I've had to revise to, um, to meet the client's needs. And it's all part of the process. So, you know, not everything we're going to do is going to turn out perfectly the first time. So. So our next thing we were going to talk about was um, some new, some new stuff and some old stuff, I guess. And I, I, I kind of don't know if this is two segments or one segment. We'll kind of play it by ear and see how it sounds. But yeah. uh, yesterday, Spitfire finally released this thing they've been teasing on YouTube for the past two <laughs> weeks. Uh, this Kepler Orchestra thing. Um, I've had a chance to kind of go through the walkthrough video. I didn't buy it, so I haven't had any time to literally sit down with the samples. Um, this is just purely my thoughts based on um, you know, anything you hear from me. It's totally based on everything you are of it. You can see without paying any money to Spitfire at all, the walkthrough videos. I think I messed with the little patches they sent out a little bit. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, I don't know what you've done, Chris. But, uh, yeah, we're I've, just going to kind of talk about like, what we think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> Because as soon as I, I downloaded saw the them email. and like even got them like all loaded up in contact, but then oh, I, like, okay. I, I I was like it was really busy that day and I had like five minutes to play with two of the patches and then I haven't looked right. at it since I've just been so busy. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Like as soon as I saw the email, I'm like, yep, they did this uh, marketing thing last year, and uh, I'm not uh, I, I'm not uh, interested at the moment. <laughs> so sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. So it's kind of like it seems like a like a library that really focuses on. Um, I don't it's hard because it's not a phrase library and and right. they they say that in their walkthrough video and it's true it's not really a phrase library but the things that it focuses on are these are the sort of the subtle nuances I guess I would say of the of re, note rearticulation so like right. if you have a violin line that's kind of a pulsing rhythmic you know dun 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 dun, dun. yeah that's very um, that has some very unique and very subtle nuances in an actual performance that it are are nigh impossible to replicate uh, using sample libraries because you would need you know 700 round robins basically to do it. Um, yeah. So it, it seems like kind of focused on that. Some sound design stuff with Doppler. I was saying to Chris and and um, Todd before we start recording that I think Spitfire is at its best when it is trying to make libraries that do something with sound that you can't do with regular instruments that that, that went that when they something like a like a Hans Zimmer strings where they're trying to let's make a patch out of you know a bowing with the wood of the bow instead of the the hair of the bow or um you know putting a mic in a under a riser or in a bottle right. or whatever like whenever they do these weird sort of experimental things i feel like they they get some pretty good results so i thought this was this was maybe maybe worth looking at i uh chris also mentioned and i had the same thought that this kind of sounded a little time macro-y to me mm -hmm. um so kind of the, down that same avenue so anyway chris i don't know what you've looked at or what your thoughts are but yeah, I mean, I've had a very quick look at their like two-hour live stream of the event, and it, like definitely conceptually, it's very very cool. Um, but my first impressions were really like, why do we need this? Like, is this something we really need right now? I mean, I think there's probably other developers who have tried to solve the repetition problem. Like, I for me, I know OT, um, their Metropolis Arc three, they have patches dedicated to repetitions and all of that, and. I mean, Arc Three is is definitely a kind of a trailer oriented library, but they you know they've done their part in trying to have the more natural rhythmic you know things like that. And speaking of time macro, it's yeah, like I think time macro's thing is based on three things. Um, number one is to have very smooth and flowing uh, sustains that feel like they're evolving over time. Uh, number two mm -hmm. is to have I think it was uh, let me check actually. Time macro. Um, they, oh, they wanted like pendulum uh, effects. They they wanted to see if they could, you know, have instruments that swell in and out, kind of like how a pendulum works in a in a clock. Um, so all these all these rhythmic things that they do with um, the orchestra, it's really interesting that you know Spitfire and OT are kind of the ones to to really you know step forward in this. And I personally haven't really played around with any of the Kepler stuff yet, but 
you know, the people on VI control definitely have some strong opinions about it. So <laughs> at, at the moment, it's <laughs> what VI control. Yeah, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah, no, I mean, yeah. I think this, these both these libraries, both the Time Macro Library and this library, have this interesting thing because. So, so I've often I, I I really like like a John Adams, Terry Riley, Philip Glass like like mm. approach to concert music. Like I love all of their music. Philip Glass less so. Probably it's like a, I'm more of like a Terry Riley, John Adams right. kind of person. And I really like that music. And I've often thought I don't hear it a lot in like cinematic music and movie music or in uh, game music. Um, so I kind of applaud both developers for sort of trying to bring that John Adams vibe to it. And uh, I don't know. I've never really had a an instance where someone was asking for that. But right. I have wanted to hear that, I guess, mm. um, in, in cinematic music. Because it's a really cool idea. It's a really cool texture. If you want to uh, – John Adams has a piece called um, Harmonia Lejera. Okay. Uh, which is um, very much, if you listen to it, it's like, oh, this sounds like the, t- the Time Macro demo, or this sounds like right, the right, right, right. Kepler demos. Um, yeah, they're definitely, that's kind of what they're, I think, what they're going for. Uh, and it works really well. I've actually, that piece is excerpted in um, one of the Civilization games. When you get to the modern era, they actually have like that piece playing in the background, like a recording of it. And uh, it's it's really cool. Um, so I, 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 I'm interested in where this goes. I hope to hear more of this in cinematic and game music. I'm not sure if the people who are making the musical decisions about those necessarily are aware of this sort of texture, but so it'd be nice to sort of maybe see that kind of come to the fore, I guess. Mm. But yeah, I personally haven't had any, um, any need for something like this. I mean, the, like my cell is completely one, like 100%, um, acoustic orchestration. So, um, like something like this is definitely, uh, well, and this a, is possible to do with samples. I mean, it is right. possible to get very close to this. It's just a pain, and it requires you to spend a lot of time, yeah. you know, fighting the sample. Sure. So, I don't know. I thought it was interesting. I don't mm-hmm. know if I'll pick it up. It's it's a good price. I like the price. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you yeah, were talking about sure. that, Chris. I was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, is it any different than what they already offer? Yeah, because it's like a, it's like a, so we were talking about this when we started that it's like, um, the, whenever you have like repetitive phrases, especially like repetitive notes, bum, 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 Mm -hmm. bum, 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 there's a lot of, especially in strings, there's a lot of subtlety there that is, can be very hard to program. Mm -hmm. So what they have done is it's not a phrase library, but the way that they have programmed it is you, you don't lose that subtlety, but it's very easy to achieve. Um, So I I do think, I do think it's a genuinely interesting, and I think both, again, we keep mentioning time macro, sort of, it's hard to not mention that with this. I think both those libraries are, are sort of going for the same thing and i do think that's actually pretty valuable because um if you sit down even with round robins up to like i think i have a a, a, a hollywood strings patch that has like 20 round robins for one of the short strings right. even then it still can sound robotic if you're just not really really careful um yes. and you have to really go in and fiddle with it whereas this is like you know you sit down and it just works so i do think that this is is again it doing something interesting it's not just them releasing oh here's a new you know, orchestra that's completely the same as our other orchestra. I do think this is different. Um, but yeah. yes. No, I mean, I heard this stuff. Um, <clears throat> if you guys didn't talk about it already, they did send out an email. Did you guys get the email that they sent? A lot of people oh, yeah, in yeah, the, in the yeah. Discord were kind of like, what the hell? Yep. You know, that's kind of like a security issue. But uh, they do offer some free demo patches on the website. Uh, so if you want to try it out. But, I mean, the only thing I have a concern about is this is the where music game, this is where scoring's going so i guess what i'm trying to say is the things that we all grew up with or we're trying to do like i think there's going to be a niche for like orchestral stuff like there's still going to be people that want that in that but like do you guys think this is the future like you know it's just just, you know i mean i would say this this is the future if you're trying to do a project where you are in charge of creating the entirety of the sound right like if you're working on a project where a real orchestra is going to be recorded this is not super useful to you because you're just going to end up sending it to an orchestrator who's just going to listen right. to it and transcribe a lot of this into into your score. So from that perspective, I don't see it as super useful. But as again, as a sound design element, as an element mm-hmm. uh, that you can sort of add to something to make it a little bit more unique, I think I think both these libraries are, are you know, 
are, are useful. And I, and I do think that if you're going to, if you're going to go in here and be like Spitfire Kepler orchestra makes no sense, it's not useful, blah, 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 which some people are, um, <laughs> on VI control, of course. Yep. Um, I, I like, you must also hate time macro cause they seem the same to me. Yeah, <laughs> they seem yeah, like the yeah, same yeah. idea. And I think both seem very useful. Actually. I would love to pick up both personally, but I mean, that's, Again, that's just me, but I, again, I, I like it when Spitfire does something that's not just, we're going to sample an orchestra and give you an, or, you know, a playable right. violin patch. That's like something unique. And I think this is definitely a step in that direction and more, more of that kind of style, because I think they bring something interesting to it, but yes, yeah, but yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I just, I, I'm just finding like all their libraries are this thing, you know, like that, I guess it, like ambient like that's the way they're going which is good because i love ambient music it's just like the the swells and like the like orchestra swarm mm-hmm. orchestral swarm you know all that stuff mm-hmm. is like you hold down the things and it kind of evolves over time i guess the evos right right, right. and this is um, you know i was i was similar. just i was just using mass or massive i don't even know how to pronounce yeah. it they're big one that's like large ensemble patches and you can actually get fairly close to this with that too. I accidentally just fell into it. Well, it was long before they even announced this. I was just messing with it cause I had bought it mm-hmm. the other day and I was just like, and I ended up just kind of making this like tick, 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 tick thing. And it sounded very <laughs> similar to this. Um, uh, again, it took a little more fiddling. So I don't know. It also sounds like it's, it's mixing in with synths, right? I like, think well, there I are some synth yeah. ideas that are in other patches. Um, I think the, the bulk of the programming was just in that sort of getting that John Adams sound, um, okay without having to kill yourself with, right. with, you know, lots of MIDI yeah. programming. Well, cause it's got Mercury synth here. So yeah. it's kind of blending the sounds. I mean, it's cool. It's, it's a great concept. I just, when I heard the trailer, I was just like, I was just like, what? You know, cause like it's, I mean, I, you gotta look at it from their perspective. You know, I know we always rag on Spitfire because, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, but they, what they do as well. I mean, they do well mm-hmm. at marketing. Um, I know sometimes it gets, a little too much like for me like i tune out now like because i get an email i swear to god every day about something that they're doing which is great but you know being a sample library company and or where they start orchestral is like dude how many orchestral libraries can you put out how many string libraries so they have to they have to go into a different direction and so it it make as a business it makes sense um so yeah i get it you know i i don't hate on them i like i love their stuff like i said for me, they're like the apple of the sample library community. Like mm-hmm. they think like them, everything's clean, you know, it's very high quality and they don't usually put out something that, you know, is half-assed, I guess you could say. And even if there is pushback, they usually respond and fix it. Right. You know, they'll course correct pretty quickly, um, which is a great company. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, I know we kind of rag on them, it, but we do, I have, I swear to God, I have a lot of Spitfire products. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I just don't buy into that VI control fanboy, like oh my god, you know, like we kind of got talking about I think that. Recently, VI control has been very hostile to Spitfire. There's been a lot of threads is. that have been extremely critical of them, which we can either seg now or seg uh, in a little bit into mm-hmm. our next topic of some people uh, ragging on their <laughs> studio series that I would like to politely well, yeah, well, correct. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. Look, hold on. I just want to finish one thought. Do it. Do your thing. Is, um, well, it, I think, it, I think the honeymoon phase is over with Spitfire. Like, you know, there was a, like a couple of years, especially when I first started getting into the orchestral stuff, like in 2000, was it 15? Mm. Yeah. 2015. Like, Spitfire only had the Albions and like they just started doing a few things. Yes. Um, you know, and everything was new and everything they were doing was great. But I think I think we're I think they're running out of their honeymoon phase. Like people are now starting to go, Okay, I get an email every you know what I'm saying, like the burnout. Yeah. We're, we're starting to get that. And I think that's starting to hit people and I think people's pocketbooks and wallets are, you know, just have dust in them. Right. <laughs> you know, so it's it's just probably that like oh not another one not the you know what I mean it's like after a while you're just collecting them are you actually utilizing them and that's right. why I, I, I've stopped buying stuff and it's like use like we said before before my internet you know took a crap is like learn what you own and match them like an instrument mm-hmm. because buying more is not going to make you better um, you know master what you got and like i said curtis still uses east west hollywood orchestra i still love some stuff out of there somebody in the discord asked like uh percussion wise like cymbals and i think east west has some really great cymbals um the their percussion mm-hmm. really nice they usually work really well with what i do um 
is a mixing thing. Like, right. you know what I mean? They right. just kind of fit in the mix very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I, I, that's my point on that. I'm sorry I didn't get to talk a lot about the Kepler. I don't really know much about it. Yeah. Um, and my internet kind of went, but yeah, let, let's move into the next one, Chris. I know you had a lot to talk about on this. So there's, I mean, like in terms of like hostility to Spitfire on VI control in particular, I've been recently seeing, I think it was like three or four threads about their studio series uh, of libraries, <laughs> which I actually now own because uh, they had that giant like half off sale recently. And I was like, all right, whatever, fine, yes. <laughs> fine. You've worn <laughs> me down. So I bought the studio series. I did not buy the pros. I just bought the regular one and then their orchestra just right. so I could have some, you know, I'm always looking to blend, you know, I, what I do usually is I'll use my typical approach to orchestra is I start with a fully East West template and then I blend other libraries into it when I start getting tired of it. You know, I, I yeah. just blend a little bit of, you know, maybe century strings blend a little bit of uh, Spitfire strings into it to just change the sound just a little bit. Um, and so I've I've played with it, I've messed with it, and uh, I was I've I've read all the threads. I actually did. I was bored one day. I didn't want to work. I was <laughs> just trying to find something <laughs> to do other than working on what I was working. I was supposed to be working on, and so I read through all the threads, and I just. Um, and maybe this is sort of a bed of their own making in the terms of like, um, I just saw a lot of people who were talking about, and it just seemed like, and I don't know these people personally, I have no idea where, the, where they're coming from with their criticism, that what they want is a library that just sounds good just when they download it and start using it, it sounds great. And mm. that's not a thing that is always going to exist. And what seemed to be the biggest disconnect i think was just like it seemed like every time i looked at somebody criticizing this it was basically came down to you don't understand the difference between like dry versus wet libraries <laughs> like libraries that are <laughs> recorded with close mics so there's no room in them at all mm-hmm. um you know stuff that is uh also you know the sp- the studio series is a smaller ensembles like the number of violins in the violin section is like halved right yeah. <laughs> um and, and like, so what is that for? Like, like, what is a studio series for? And I, and I would suggest to you that one of the really great things about having a library like that, that might not sound good on itself, is that when you take a library like that, that's all close mic'd with no room in it, which thank God, thank you, Spitfire, you have too much room in your libraries. Um, <laughs> Air Studios is great, man, but like, I, I need to be able to put it through my own reverb so it will sit with other stuff. So just... Like, I love a dry library. Um, but anyway, that's a different discussion. Um, when you have something that's like this, what you get out of it is detail, right? Like, when when a violin player plays a note and pulls that bow across the string, there's a lot of, a lot of detail in the sound that you miss if you're just using, you know, a surround, you know, a tree mic on a full violin section, you're not hearing the rosin on the, you know, hitting the, the bow. There's not that kind of that, I don't want to use the word scratch, but that scratchy kind of like texture of the sound. And that's one of the things that libraries like this are super useful for, right? Like they're super useful in terms of like just, blending them in just a little bit and you get that detail with the huge sound right like you get the sound of the full orchestra plus just a little bit of detail so it sounds like like something real and something interesting um and that gives the sound of the strings a a, a, a sort of a foreground middle ground background right like that whole that interesting something to listen to and and i feel like that's a that's what this kind of library is designed for it's designed to give you those little details and it's dry because it's designed to to fit you know into your template in a way so that you can put reverb and eq on it to make it fit instead of having to try to make every all your other reverb sound like air right like on a lot of their other libraries like which you're never going to be able to do because it's its own thing and i don't have impulses from it if i had impulses from it it would probably be fine but i don't i don't think they'll ever let anyone impulse that room um it Mm. would that would their magic would go away magic would be digitized but um but yeah, I just think that there was a lot of stuff in there. People like, well, listen to this. And it was like, you know, the patch by itself, right? Yeah. Uh, with no reverb or EQ or any kind of shaping to it at all. Just like, listen to this. And it's like, well, of course that sounds bad. That That's not, this is, that's not what this is designed to do. And I just, I, I felt like there was a lot of disconnect here. And I see this a lot with uh, other libraries too. I mean, when you talk about, when you see people rag on 8DO's Adagio series too, you see a lot of this because that has a lot of detail in a lot of the patches. Um, Hollywood Strings to some degree, right, is very dry. Hollywood mm-hmm. Strings has no room in the yeah. in almost any of it, even the trees. I don't know how they do that. Right. Uh, but even the tree 
mics don't have room in them. And it sounds like they were recorded in an anechoic chamber sometimes. Um, <laughs> and like you, you bring your reverb to the table. Like that's what that's designed to do. And that's a lot more right. useful to you because you can mix it with something else without having to worry about it sticking out because yeah. then you just throw them both. You throw mm-hmm. both through the same instance of fab filter or, or east west or whatever and it sounds good so like when you're looking at these libraries don't just think of them as what they sound like when you just slam your finger down and play the single trumpet close mic legato patch like mm-hmm. you have to you have to understand what the what the aim of this stuff is and this kind of goes to a broader point and this is less of a spitfire defense and more of a sample library developer in general defense is like always be asking yourself like what is this library attempting to do what is their goal here because if you're approaching it and you're saying it doesn't do this completely other thing that is not the goal that's a problem with you not the library (laughs) you know um and so anyway that was that was my little rant about all of these because i saw at least a thread on at least the a single thread on the strings a single thread on the brass and a single thread on the woodwinds and they all had this same thing where there were just people in there like seemingly uninterested in working with the samples at all or understanding what they were for and it was very frustrating to me and since i've got this wonderful podcast the privilege of being on this wonderful podcast <laughs> i thought i would get on here and yell at people so there's my old man rant no you it's a valid point curtis i think what what's happened is the sample the library developers have done the work for most people and they're so used to it like they have all the reverbs baked in like think about when we got even you more than me like vienna that was the driest library ever mm-hmm. and they still do dry right yep. i think um yeah so and you had to build the room mm-hmm. yourself well sample libraries just said we're not going to do that we're going to build it for you and right. you know what i mean so you're kind of locked in but yeah like, going back to your point um for that flexibility, if you're just going to use all Spitfire, then yeah, it it works beautiful for all their libraries because it's in air. It works. But yeah, when you want to start, if you're not that person and you're layering other libraries, that's where it's going to get difficult. And I've found that myself. Like it just gets too reverby. Um, but I think it's it's exactly what you said, Curtis. It's just a misunderstanding or they don't understand yeah. that. You know what I mean? Because like most people that are probably getting into this now that are buying libraries were never around in those days they've just gotten all the libraries that just man listen to that it sounds so good right out of the box but the problem is is when you start mm-hmm. putting them together and that's when the problem arises so it's just people they're not putting in the work or the research and understanding understanding how eq and what reverb like, like yeah interact <laughs> understanding yeah. you know all this yeah. different stuff and 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 i don't know I, I, I think what really set me off in terms of being a little bit annoyed was that, you know, when I when I am sitting down to write something, my overall goal is to try not to mess with technical stuff and mastering and mixing and right. just focus on the content first. Because if the content's not good, none of that other, you know, we talk about this all the time, none of that's going to matter. Um, and so everything exactly. that makes me have to mess with, um, you know, mess with, I guess, anything that makes me fight your sample library to to make it. Obviously, I, I have like a standard of production quality that that if I go below, it starts annoying me enough that I can't even focus on the content because it's too low. And and to me, in my personal experience, samples that have way too much room in them are way. Hard, I fight with them a way more than stuff that's just dry, right? Right. Because. Yeah. You know, if it's if it's dry and it's poking out, I just send it through the same bus as the other instruments of that kind. And it gets a, you know, it goes through my little reverb chain of, you know, the violin specific reverb out to the room specific reverb out to the EQ out to the final, um, you know, and, and so and it just it's glues like glue. it all together. Right. It's it just like, like it, it and it's yep. one click, you know, versus having to go in. OK, I can. Is there any way to turn these? bar mics down is there any way to you know and 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 that distracts from the content and it makes me extremely irritated when i have to do that because all of a sudden i'm spending 15 minutes fixing this instead of doing that and so to see a, like seemingly this large contingent of people who 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 want to <laughs> who want libraries that are hard for me to work with just makes me just like so enraged <laughs> yeah. because i'm just like focus <laughs> on your music Focus on your music. Don't worry about it. Like, and if right. if it doesn't sound good, go record the violin somewhere else and work it later. Like, come bring those libraries into your into your You're project right. later, and then work it. But I, I don't know. It, it, this all seemed like very much like, and I, I don't know this. I don't know most of these people 
complaining about this. Maybe people have validated <laughs> it. Right. I don't know. Uh, I just saw a lot of stuff on my, my initial thought was just like, you do, you just don't work with multiple sample libraries. Do you, you don't know how this works. Um, and it right. seemed very, yeah. well, that's what it, it seemed is. Very, I mean, I think a little tip we could put in there is if, if let's say you're going to use Spitfire and you know, error, the, you know, try to build, then try to find instruments that will kind of fit into that. Maybe that are less reverby, you know, um, but it's kind of hard because all sample libraries now have that. Just turn it off. Just go in and turn off the reverb in the library. But there's oh, yeah, yeah. If you're using reverb, reverb but, in this in you know. the actual engine, <laughs> um, God help you. Yeah. Which people God think help they probably you. don't know that. You need to go buy Fab it's, Filter or QL. You know, I, this yeah. podcast we spend a lot of time telling you that you know don't focus too much on buying libraries like that one. You need an external reverb. Like you, you need reverb that you control yeah. at the end of your chain, not in, not baked in. Please don't do that. It's it it's right. uh, you will fight. You will fight Turn with it. Turn it off. And then like we t- we talked about last show, check out Val- Valhalla. Yeah, Valhalla is Valhalla. awesome. Very great. Mm-hmm. I was recently working yeah, with somebody who's who's price. who's you know they're not they're not they're not a nobody. They work on serious projects, and they were putting Valhalla reverb on stuff, and I was like, oh, cool, that's nice to see. You know, yeah. like that that's yeah. that that's um, yeah, very it's a complete yeah, it's like price. very cheap. It's very <laughs> yeah yeah, and it gives you they give <laughs> yeah, you a ton cheap. of stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, I absolutely, yeah, stuff. and mm-hmm. if it works for you, great, great, um, wonderful. I mean, I, I personally yeah. am a fan but of yeah, impulse-based I'm, ones okay. because it makes it a little bit easier to just throw everything into the same room, right? Yeah. Like an impulse-based. And we should probably just quickly explain the difference here. There are two kinds of reverb, basically, algorithmic and impulse-based. Uh, algorithmic reverb is purely digital. It's just starting from from nothing and using digital effects processing to add the reverb to the signal. But it's not actually trying to recreate a real space. And then there's impulse-based reverb where they go into the room, they run a little machine that runs a sign that plays a sine wave and they record it and they do all this you know incantations they sacrifice a goat um etc and what you end up with is um an impulse from the room where you can just put instruments in that room and they will they will react as if they were they the reverb is accurate as if they were sitting in that room so you can go get an impulse of you know air studios right yeah. like you could theoretically go get the impulse of air studios <laughs> exactly. and put everything in air studios and it would sound almost identical so just as a little side note in case people don't know the difference Cool. Um, so this is really about reverb, I guess. This whole thing is all about reverb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 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 all tied in there, man. It's like yeah, we do tell you all the time to focus on, the, and you should focus on the music and then do production last. I know a lot of people do it as they go. Um, I think it. Some people can do that. I know Daniel James does that a lot. He does it while he does it. He but he's been doing this for so long. Like he knows what he needs to do. He knows his libraries very right. very well. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's skilled. He's yeah. And front load your work too. I mean, when you make your template, if you use a template, if you're a template person, you know, your template can do most of this work for you at the beginning because 99% of your stuff is going to have the same, you know, chain on it. Right. Yeah. You're going to gravitate to the same library, same reverb, same effects. If you build that all in your template, it makes your life a lot easier so you can focus on your music. And I know Chris, you're not a big template guy. So, but you know, you, but you use the same libraries, That's right. like you know what I mean. You're you're mastering those libraries. You know how they sound. You know what clashes, what works, what doesn't work. And that's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, you have to know your libraries in about. They're just like an instrument, just like a guitar. I pick up a guitar. Every guitar I play feels different, sounds different, um, and I need to you know counteract that with what I'm doing, especially when I'm doing you know like amps are the best thing. Like so much distortion in that it doesn't work well with this or kills that and you know but yeah it focuses right on i mean like the, i mean the, you can't you but, you can't you know. ignore i'm oh, sorry chris i'll let you see all yeah, these yeah, people been talking my mouth off oh i was gonna say you can't ignore the production <laughs> side because you know when you're in a context of trying to get a cue approved you'd be amazed how just changing the the production side of things can skin without changing the music can get mm-hmm. something approved um, or gets get people realize oh that's what you mean because it's really well, hard for non-musical people to listen to the idea that you are putting forward without yeah. separating it from the production so i mean it is important to understand that and i i wouldn't say don't don't not don't do that you I mean it's you're going to end up it's going to be hard. You're, you're going to have a bad time right. if you just ignore production. <laughs> well, I almost think you almost need to be a better production person. Than uh, production is, and production is so hard. But anyway, Chris, I interrupted you. Please, <laughs> please say what you were saying. Oh, no, I was just saying that, uh, yeah, like the two developers that I, I use, um, OT and, and CineSamples, they, uh, like they both chose excellent rooms to record in. And um, it, for me, it takes out 
the reverb equation almost completely because I can just focus on what I want the music to sound like and it already sounds quite good out of the box. So um, like I'm not worried in the slightest about trying to get those two rooms to work together because like even though they are different, those little minute differences won't really affect the final mix all that much. And you know, sometimes the Berlin stuff can be a slightly too wet, so you know, I might have to choose a closer mic or something like that and you know, lower the level and or raise the level in competition comparison to the tree mic or something but but honestly it's it's all about the music and you know like like todd and curtis mm -hmm. were saying just just know your tools and to get the best out of them just uh just don't don't tweak too much let's enjoy the writing process that's the the biggest thing right so and if you have any any questions in yeah there, come on over know. to discord we say this a lot and you can get your tracks feedback and we'll we'll go in there and let you know mm -hmm. i mean that's what it's there for and People utilize it and need to utilize it more. I know we all fear. We all don't want to put our tracks up and get slaughtered, but that's the only You're way. We're not going to get, get slaughtered. I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. no, we, we'll give you good feedback. No, I'm saying, like, I've never seen anybody yeah. give any yeah. bad feedback. I mean, and we've had the Discord now for over a year, mm -hmm. I think over a year. Um, and uh, Curtis yes. gives really good feedback. Chris does. And I try to as much as possible. Um, and uh, and people do in there as well. So, yeah, if you're if you're looking for that, just come on over and. Just go to the composingmadesimple.com website, and there's a, a up at the top says Discord. Just click on that, and you should be able to get invited. It doesn't cost you anything, and it's free. And we're all there hanging out usually. Some days it's busy. Some days, you know, you won't hear people. But I try to be in there at least once a day, um, you know, and try to post stuff and be active. Mm -hmm. But uh, some days it's yeah. quiet. But, you know. It's that's been very active recently. Happens. I woke up with to 100 messages yeah. I hadn't read this morning. That was great. <laughs> yeah. Come on <laughs> so, over. Yeah. Um, it, it, Shout out to yes, Whiskers right. and Bat Waffle, um, yeah, <laughs> if they're listening. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, they're yeah, good guys yeah, in there. Um, all right, so do you want to move to I the think, next topic, Curtis? Is I think we should actually just go straight to picks because <laughs> I can just roll that into my picks. Okay, go to picks. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. All right, sure. Uh, Chris, you want to go first with your pick? Then? So we're going to talk about our picks of the week, and uh, uh, I'll start. So I recently did a review of the Orchestral Tools uh, Berlin Woodwinds Expansions B and C, which are basically their two soloist uh, libraries for woodwinds, and they basically cover all of the main orchestral instruments, uh, even some uh, lower ones too, in Expansion C, uh, like bass flute and uh, bass oboe and bass clarinet and all that stuff. Um, and in my opinion, it's probably the, the best um, out-of-the-box sounding woodwinds uh, for solo writing and uh, like VSL has a strong case for that too, but um, the the impulse that's already built into those instruments, the Teldex impulse, sounds really really good. And you know the instruments just have this level of detail and emotion in them that I I really can't seem to find anywhere else. And yeah, to be honest, it, it sounds super super detailed and it's just very very clear and passionate to me. So um, th those are my picks. Berlin woodwinds, I, I, I still love them. I think they're the best sounding woodwinds out there. Mm. That's just my personal opinion. I love them. All right. So I'll do my pick, pick of the week or month or whatever. Um, I've been really utilizing my Kemper profile amp. I don't know if I've talked about this on an earlier podcast. I think I mentioned it. Um, but it's basically given me the ability. I don't need an amp anymore. I mean, I get any amp I want pretty much as long as it's been profiled. And there's a uh, shout out to Tone Junkie, I think it's .com. He makes, the, the people there make really great profiles. And I've got a lot, and they're pretty inexpensive packs, you know, sometimes like 10 bucks. Sometimes he gives away free ones. And even the free ones are really great. So what a Kemper is, is it basically profiles an amp. Um, you know, the sound quality of the speaker and the amp you're using and all that combination and basically puts it in digital form. Um, and then, because the, the best thing about it, it's, there's another thing, um, fractal audio units. There's a bunch of stuff like that, and Helix. But the, what the makes the Kemper different is you can profile amps, any amp. You know, you get, you get your microphone, and then you profile it. And it will do its little thing, and there you go, and you can store it. So if you have, like I have one amp, but if I had a collection of like classic amps that I don't want to ruin or whatever, I can profile them, and then I have them in there, and I can pull them up at any time. I've been getting some old like vintage 60s, like what Jimmy Pages was using and some Marshall stuff. And it's just like, oh my God, it's like right there. And the great thing about it is everybody's like, well, wait a minute, how can you capture an amp? I mean, obviously you're not going to capture what an amp sounds like in a room because you get that, you know, the, the air being pushed by the speaker. But, you know, when you're thinking about it in a recording sense with a microphone up to it, you know, closed, like it's, you 
people have a hard time distinguishing a Kemper from an actual recording of a real guitar. Like, it's fooled people. Like, professionals. Like, oh, no, that one is. And it's amazing. Like, you you really can't tell the difference. Because once you put a mic and you put it in a mix, all bets are off. You know what I mean? It's similar to the sample libraries. You know, you, obviously, when you build a mix, you got to think of it from the beginning, right? And build it from there. Obviously, things happen. And you have to... You know, you know, move as you like I said, be like water. And that book I was talking about is Bruce Lee's Striking Thoughts. Sorry, I didn't mention that earlier. That's another pick of mine. That's a great book. Read it. Um, so yeah, I mean, the Kemper Profile Amp. It's you know, it's a little on the expensive side, but if you're a guitar player, it will literally change what you do because <laughs> it's you can get one that has a built-in amp in it, so you can actually put cabs to it. I don't have that version. I didn't think I needed it because I'm not going to tour. You know, play live. It's just basically for studio stuff. And it just hooks into my audio interface, and I have pretty much my hands to any amp that's available that somebody's profiled. So, I re- really highly recommend it if you have, if you're a guitar player. Magnificent, right, Todd. That sounds really cool. Um, yeah. so, I'm kind of curious to see if I could actually run stuff through it. Like, yeah. Sam- you know what I'm saying? Like you should be able sample, to, right? If, I don't know how to do that. Uh, yeah, I probably should be able to. And then, because the, th- what they've done, do sorry to think? go off, but they've added new reverbs and nice. delays. Uh, Kemper actually has, and they're sounding really good. It almost is almost co- competitive with my uh, Strymon hard mm. gear stuff, my Strymon Big Sky and Timeland. They're they're almost as good, like, if not as good as those. So anyway, um, yeah, that sounds really cool. Uh, my pick of the week for this week is Vienna Ensemble Pro Seven, uh, which just recently released. Um, when it first released, I sort of hesitated to upgrade because I saw some people having some issues, and I usually try to be the turtle uh, on upgrades. I sort of wait and watch other people go off the cliff and wait until the cliff has got a bridge built over it before I upgrade. But um, I, you know, I had seen that it was you know mostly getting resolved, so I decided, well, I'm going to have to do this, and now's a good time. You know, I'm kind of at the beginning of a project, not the end when everything could fall apart. So I'll do it now. So I did it, and I'm really glad I did. It's uh, it's very good. It's it's got a lot of the interface is significantly more easy to navigate. Um, they've added the thing I right, I've only used it for about the past few days, but what I've immediately noticed is that um, that it's much easier to see how much resources each instance inside of Vienna is using. So if you know you're sitting there and for some reason you're getting pops and clicks, it's very easy with just a quick you know, glance over to see, oh, it's that, that sample's having a problem or that, that, you know, it's my QL pianos or whatever that's, that's causing the CPU spike or whatever. And then kind of gives you a chance to go over and actually isolate that problem and look at it. Uh, if you want a really good overview of all the new features, they have some on their website, but actually the very best one is on VI control. There's a forum posting by Nightwatch. Uh, the title of the thread is Vienna Ensemble Pro Features, and he's got a 20 minute uh, video up on his YouTube that he's posted there that uh, shows you all the new features. It's very, you know, it's a very sensible walkthrough. You know, he doesn't spend the first 27 minutes plugging his Patreon or anything. He just goes right into it. It's it's a great okay. video. Um, it looks like, you know, like the built-in effects look like they're pretty good. It looks like it's got some really good built-in EQs and stuff, if that's something that you like to, if that's where you like to do that. Then again, because Vienna sort of spreads out your stuff a lot of time, you know, onto different machines, a lot of times maybe you don't want your sample uh, server to be um, doing reverb. Maybe you want to save that for the main DAW, or maybe you do want it to. Maybe your main DAW is doing other things. So this gives you sort of more flexibility there. Their EQ looks really cool. I particularly like that the um, interface for their EQ actually shows you a piano keyboard underneath the uh, spectrum so you can see exactly which notes are causing these, you know, these bumps. Uh, I, I did not have any formal training in production when I was uh, getting training. And so I don't, I'm not able to listen to like, you know, aside from 440, you know, if you're like, what's 3.5 K, I have no idea where that is on the keyboard. So having that keyboard in the equalizer is great for noobs like me. Um, so yeah, it just looks like a really great solid update. Definitely looks like it's worth the money. I definitely like that they've moved to per per license pricing where you just buy as many licenses as you need instead of having this weird like you spend $200 for three and then $40 for other one. It's, it was very complicated before this. Now it's very straightforward. Each license costs this much, uh, this many uh, European coins or whatever. Um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, it's 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 been a very good so far. I've I've run into no problems. I've opened up multiple projects and multiple you know older stuff just to make sure the things open, and I have I have run into literally no problems yet. So 
that is my pick nice. of the um, podcast. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Composing Made Simple Podcast. Head on over to ComposingMadeSimple.com where you can find the information on me, Chris, and Curtis and how you can join our Discord server. Please on, come on over there and hang out with us. Also, if you're listening to this on iTunes or any of that, please leave us a review that helps out the podcast. We'd love to hear your feedback. And as always, we'll see you on the next episode. Take care.